Mike Tyson has been the most destructive and explosive fighter of all time, but even he got punished for his big arrogance in the ring. While partying and enjoying the countless millions that he had, a fellow heavyweight by the name of James Buster Douglas was preparing for their fight in Tokyo. A 40 to 1 underdog was what everyone expected to be an easy knockout for the kid dynamite that was in his prime, but on fight night reality didn't seem normal. Here, you see Mike Tyson in the black trunks, traditional. Douglas, who had trained hard, surprised the world by dominating the fight from the beginning, using his 12-inch reach advantage to perfection, seemingly hitting Tyson at will with jabs and right hands. Sustain this. He, of course, Mike hasn't tagged him yet with a big blow. Look at them as they exchange here in round one. Oh, that right hand! Larry Rosadio of the United States, Ken Morita of the U.S., and Mr. Uchiha from Japan here. Mike will try to get in and land that big right hand in half. 11 and a half pounds heavier than is uh, Mike Tyson. Coming up to the closing seconds of this, the first one. Wow! With the right hand is Buster Douglas. And comes about uh, the heads coming together. You saw Mike's head come right in the cheek there of Buster Douglas. You see the way Mike dips down. And by the judge, we're actually talking about Octavio Miran. Oh, an uppercut got through that time by Buster. Look at this. Buster landing some shots here. Mike Tyson. Oh, that, there's the left hook they got through. That's the first real telling blow by Mike Tyson. And now let's see if Buster can hang on and keep him off. There's the ability of Buster Douglas again. You have to say, in all the fights and all the world telecasts we've done that have involved. Tyson was a slow fighter who wouldn't move his head to inch his way in. Instead, he planted his feet, launched powerful hooks, and kept trying to outshine Douglas with one blow. Douglas is saying, hey, I can beat Tyson. Uh, he's not so tough. And when a fighter believes in his left eye, Buster, a little abrasion by his left eye. Wow, with the left hand and Buster Douglas. Buster, he did in seven and eight in his history. When he's got fatigue, he's sustained through the 10th ref. Oh, right hand landed as the referee was breaking them. Mike misses the uppercut with the ability to tie Mike's hands up. For some reason, Mike just doesn't look as aggressive and menacing as I've seen him in so many other fights. But all that can change with one big shot. And this is the biggest night of his life. Midway through the second round, a place that many of us thought uh, we might not see. Hey, there's a grazing right hand in through the left hand by Mike Tyson. That one, he kind of shoots from the hip and misses the left hand. And notice Buster doing a pretty good job getting right hand landed that time. Buster is, if, if, if two, three, or four is a question mark, it's come very easy for him so far. Now he's got a man who's standing up to him. His mind is willing. Are his legs still there? Buster has got the confidence of perhaps, you know, you go back to when Leon Spinks fought Muhammad. Buster down, as you know, it's going to be. Can he back Mike off? Can he keep that left going? Oh, well, gee, there's a right hand that gets thrown. You've seen it so many times before. <laughs> I still have to say. The numerous right jabs from Douglas caused Tyson's left eye to swell shut by the fifth round, and ringside HBO commentators declared it to be the most punishment they had ever seen the champion take. Mike never used to be in hit as much as he's been hitting this fight. The way the fight's going to this point, you at least have to begin thinking the possibility of an upset because I have Buster considerably outside of uh, Buster and Douglas's uh, body coming up to the closing seconds of the fifth, and this is certainly Buster Douglas' round. Uh, thunder in both hands. And you get the idea now that the adrenaline's pumping here in the center. And there's going to be a sense of urgency for Mike. And it was one big shot again. He's down, he comes with the uppercut. Somehow or other, Buster's throwing shots back. Look at this. Buster is not right in front of him. Look at this. Buster landing some shots. This is surprising here. I haven't seen Mike in this kind of trouble before. Look at Mike actually grasping to hang on. Mike missing the shots. Buster loading up the shot. 
down even in the second round in favor of Buster Douglas. See Mike much more aggressive, but again, the strange thing in my mind, I'm saying to myself, hey, is Mike mentally prepared to go the, uh, with uh, Tyrell Biggs that Mike, when he decides to pick up the pace, can do it? From Buster. But no matter what the story is, you never expect them to be in the eighth round of this heavyweight championship fight. Back together in the late portion here. Raising left hand, chopping right, missiles. Uppercut landed. Douglas was taken out by a right uppercut delivered by Tyson in the eighth round. Douglas was standing when the referee reached nine, even though the official knockdown timekeeper had a two seconds advantage. Only 16. Could have gone any distance at all, like against uh, Jose Rafalta that went 10 rounds. And, uh, oh, I suppose uh, you could talk about Tokyo, Japan. I'm Bob Sheridan. You're watching the heavyweight championship of the world. Mike Tyson throwing a little bit more leather here now in the early going of the eighth round. That this is his night and all of that sort of stuff, but it was one big shot from Mike Tyson can end all that speculation. And Mike looks like, like does that hop, skip, and a jump as the bell is trying to get those arms free. Bangs the body back upstairs in the head. Busted doing just about everything right, but Mike landed it. Quite honestly, to get through the first round, and that's why Don King has brought this show on the road. Look at Buster landing some shots here. And he hasn't backed Mike up with that all night. Oh, that's a nice uppercut. The counts up to two and three and four. The time is he going to get up? Into 1986, when he was fighting a lot, very few fights get to the second round. Almost all first round knockouts. And then uh, you get uh, into the special going tonight. We're past the midway point in round nine, and I expected Mike. Look at this! Look at Buster coming back! Did he buckle the lights to Mike? But landed by James Buster Douglas. Not intimidated at all. Now, you see what I mean about backing him off? This is the first guy I've seen that's been able to do this, but Buster's been able to gobble him up. See, that one's just off. Look at this. Buster not intimidated. He wants to keep it going. Douglas used his jab to set Tyson up for a huge uppercut that snapped Tyson's head upward. The rest is history. Of the fight to this point, nice shot inside. And now you get the shot of again. Buster fights back strongly, landing some big shots. And now he can't get Tellus. Look at this. Who would ever have expected that? His toes not shooting out that left as much. Well, there he goes. As I said, he throws the left and the right right behind him. Notice another thing about Buster, some pretty good hand speed, big uh, fights, and you see, oh, there's Mike missing that big left and just raised the chin of Buster Douglas, and Douglas answering with Buster with the movement. Mike continues to stay flat-footed, not showing a lot of boxing skills. We haven't seen any uppercuts from Mike. We haven't seen it. How dangerous can he be? I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing, there's the first, a uh, second uppercut we see by Mike Tyson inside. Buster hand, but Mike takes it on the glove, and he backs off Mike again with the left. Wild with the right hand is Buster. Together is Buster landing the, oh, nice uppercut by Buster Douglas. Look at this now, for the first time in his career, Mike Tyson hits the canvas. He's in big trouble. It's over. It's over. Mike Tyson has been knocked out. Douglas had become the first man to ever beat Mike Tyson in the professional ranks and became the undisputed champion of the world. A real-life Rocky story, Tyson would never be the same again. And suddenly... After that fight, Mike Tyson's behavior had clearly changed as he was sent to prison for a heavy charge on his name. Once released in 1995, he had a few tune-up fights before getting in the ring with longtime rival Evander Holyfield to defend his heavyweight crown. Holyfield was overlooked by Tyson, who kept calling him a pumped-up cruiserweight that did not belong to the heavyweight division. When the bell rang, however, chaos immediately erupted. See a guy. We'll see if he's overly cautious. And as expected, a nice clean right hand, a straight punch, which he normally doesn't throw a lot of. And he's got to settle down into regular fighting. He's early brawling tactics. Settling this down to more of what he wants. A sort of boxing match. Rather than just these big slugging. Holyfield comes back with a left hook. Holyfield with these early brawling tactics. He's to do it. It might be something different. And he's also trying to catch him coming in. That's, that's a game plan, but he's getting hit. 
as soon as he hit him, he got him, he got his attention. But Mike looks like he's going to take his time. He's so strong, it's unbelievable how much it's helped. Again, something unusual. Oh, a straight left hand by Holyfield. It's been Tyson holding on. He knows what he has to do. It's just a matter of getting it done and finding the timing. Well, Tyson said he's more patient and more disciplined in the ring. He's got all his anger under control in the ring. But there's no closure to this fight with that kind of ending. And no closure with the fans. It's not, it's not a bad enough cut for that. It's not a bad enough cut to worry about it, though, Bobby. What is the heavyweights? The guy that's tired here is Tyson. The guy that looks worn is Tyson, not Holyfield. Holyfield's looking chipper and good. So what we have here... Tyson continually closes the distance, but is unable to land effectively, with Holyfield landing the better blows counterpunching. Seconds of round number three. As Holyfield looks to counterpunch off the swinging miss. Does Evander Holyfield start to wear out as he does in all fights? If that's the case, that may be the only chance. That's a real scorcher. A heavyweight fight for the first time in a long time. He a right hook followed by a left by Holyfield and countering with a combination is Mike Tyson, that left hook with his, that wrestling is tiring. And stamina an issue as well in terms of Holyfield. Tyson recklessly presses forward, is caught flushed by a flurry of punches by Holyfield, but unlucky for him, he gets a huge surprise. He's not running, he's running like a champion, like the overachieving warrior oh! that he is. punches here by Mike Tyson. Left uppercut that sent Holyfield backpedaling. Far and from it. Some. And then some. Far from it. He's fighting with the confidence of a man that knows he's got the guy beat. Done. If Andrew's zeroing in on a big shot. Tyson is confused, frustrated. He unleashed a flurry there, but Holyfield comes right back and counters to the head. That's Mike shot and fires back. He rock and rolls with his right hand. There you see him again trying to rock and roll. Mike's got to throw to second, third, punch in combat. Evander Holyfield is letting it all hang out. They can pick it up after the battle. But I have him ahead by so much. I have Evander ahead by so much that it's getting to the point where he, either he gets a knockout or he's going to win this fight. He may look tired, but Tyson doesn't look like a ball of energy either. But also remember the heart of Evander Holyfield. It looks like that every time we get close, he can't fight inside with Mike. I don't think anybody can. Holyfield digging to the body with a right uppercut. Vice grip. And unleashing right. Holyfield continued to control Tyson with his jab on the outside and used his strength to control the clinch on the inside. Tyson with a hard punch. Body and left hook to the chin, I'll tell you what. That got Evander's attention and good. Tyson unleashing uppercuts to the body, digging to the chin. Started turning on and I think he... He senses it, so he's fighting a little bit happier and a little bit stronger than he was. He looked confused because he was getting out boxed for the first four rounds. And you know what happened there? Well, this is what we came to see. How can he do without fighting in each round? Holyfield also doing a nice job of picking off punches. Well, he's fighting a bright, bright, brilliant fight. He Mike can't throw going on. Tyson fights at such a frantic pace, and you're pointing that out. Look out now as they come together. Holyfield has always known in the past what tools to bring to a fight. And he's proving it again here. Look at this toe-to-toe -to -toe action. Well, Mike is getting to that little level where he might need a knockout. I don't know what the judges are looking at. I don't know how much they give a favorite uh, immortal-like fighter. Score card. Tyson missing and Holyfield countering with a right uppercut. Evander is fighting the fight, but what he's doing is kind of smart. He's trying to smother Mike, perhaps again. Holyfield also showing more hand speed. Holyfield is not letting Tyson do any of the bullying. He's doing all of it. I think Holyfield's a lot stronger than Tyson. Big shots, hooks, and uppercuts. He, Evander Holyfield is disorganizing Tyson. He's keeping him out of his attack. That hurt. Tyson started the 10th round positively, landing a few combinations as Holyfield looked to tie him up. But in the end of the round, things changed. Holyfield coming on. A right uppercut. Quickly tying him up as he comes in. Straight left hand there by 
Mike Tyson got a glancing blow. Back comes Holyfield. The jab of Holyfield. Good defensive move by Tyson. Ducks under the right hook by Holyfield. Tyson. And Evander has the reach. He should use it up the jab. The chance of Holyfield. Because of the cut. Ooh, a low blow by Holyfield. That was a low blow. He's no longer this aggressive animal. He's a little confused by what's going on. He may be working on sheer instinct right now. This crowd continues. He's going to need all the help he can get in there now. You know, as Mike comes rushing in, Evander ducks his head to not catch a shot with his head up in the air. And those heads are just banging. Beautiful. One into another. And he is not ready to fight the 12 real hard. It may be a reversal of fortune if Holyfield continues to have his way. Right, 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 right. Well, no, it's gotten to the point where I'm not sure that that's not his fight. Because Evander, Evander is landing the harder punches. And Tyson is wearing himself too. Yeah, I've got him ahead by three. And, uh, meaning that if you bought one every round, if you can only get a draw. That could have been dangerous. Holyfield. Oh, Tyson's in trouble. Holyfield smothers Tyson. Looking to put Tyson in trouble. He's saved by the bell. In the 11th, Holyfield quickly begins landing brutal combinations almost at will and sends Tyson flying back into the ropes. Holyfield not only wasn't afraid of Mike Tyson, he was tougher and stronger. An immediate rematch was set to see if it would be repeat or revenge, as Tyson promised to bring the monster out of him, and he sure did. The fight picked up where its predecessor left off, with Holyfield bullying the bully, thwarting Tyson's aggression, controlling the action on the inside, and even hurting Iron Mike before the end of round one. Not long into round two, a cut opened above Tyson's right eye, marking the second time in two fights that an accidental headbutt would inflict a handicap on the former champion. Вот такие вещи. Тайсон апеллирует к рефери. Тайсон не достает. Кажется эффективным для Халифилда. Держит Майк Тайсон. While all could see the visible anger and frustration in Tyson's eyes, no one could have ever predicted what happened next. Левый прямой. Что такое? It was the bite felt around the world, a desperate act from a man who had lost complete control of his mind, his emotions, and his actions. After much deliberation, the referee allowed the fight to continue with a two-point deduction from Tyson, but it wasn't long before Mike was in it again. Я думаю. Он человек конченый. После так... Он снова пытается его укусить. Да. Тайсон пытается вызвать Малифилда на войну. The round ended in Mills Lane, having determined that a second bite did in fact happen, finally disqualified Tyson, which only fanned the flames of the rage of Iron Mike. 
но только драки нам не хватало. The defeat brought to an end the post-prison phase of Tyson's career, when he had recaptured his image as the baddest man on the planet and appeared to once again be, arguably, the best heavyweight in the world. But it also marked a new beginning. After destroying everyone that was given to him, it was time for Tyson to challenge once again for the heavyweight crowns, this time against the all-time great Lennox Lewis. The signs of no respect between the two fighters was evident by the interviews they were doing and even from their first face-off. The early moments of the fight provided arguably the most evenly fought display of back and forth action between Tyson and Lewis as they started by jabbing away. Et avec Tyson, on connaît son punch destructeur. Voilà, encore une fois, l'histoire de avec Holyfield parce qu'en fait Tyson euh, s'était lâché à un moment. Les règles du combat s'arrêter de, de frapper lorsqu'il y aura un break demandé par l'arbitre comme là. A installé Tyson ouais. sous un faux rythme. Et pour l'instant, c'est Tyson euh, qui est plus actif. Ouais, il touche avec son direct et Tyson. Il est obligé. The second saw both trying their left hand at each other with Lewis landing a number of effective punches on Tyson as he tried to approach, including several powerful uppercuts that kept Tyson staggering backwards. Oh. Again in the fourth, Tyson rushed out at Lewis, but he simply couldn't damage the bigger man who was punishing him really hard until the end of the round. Évidemment, il pose presque son point. Heureusement, les mains sont hautes pour l'instant. Réaction de Tyson. Oh À tout moment, oh On en frise pour Mike Tyson. Et on est tombé, Tyson oh, Sur la droite Sur la droite, et il a acquiescé sur le coup, Tyson. Allez, il est en train, en fait, un petit peu de... De l'œil gauche, de l'œil droit, Mike Tyson, du côté de Lewis et avec son bras avant. Oh là là, ouais. Et ça, ça va le son. Mike Tyson, là, n'a pas le temps. Et Dick Cotton, qui le reprime. C'est limite tout ça. 
Voilà, bouger comme ça, se désaxer. Ouais, avec ses adversaires. Il y a aussi euh, maintenant, euh, allez, on va dire, ouais. et puis surtout, un manque oh. de ring euh, euh, bien plus conséquent pour Mike Tyson. Il n'avait pas été à l'aise non plus avant de toucher. Mais faut qu'il puisse toucher, faut qu'il puisse se rapprocher. As the round went on, a visibly weakened Tyson began throwing fewer and fewer punches while struggling to land on most of his attempts. Tyson. Oh! Oh, quelle est belle! Oh là, celle-là, c'est la ride! Oh! Celle-là, elle est arrivée! C'est oui, celle-là qui a touché! Avec cette droite-là, normalement, on va pêcher par excès de confiance! Oui! Parce que là, la main droite, la main gauche, pardon, de Lennox. Faiblir, faiblir! Mais, mais, il sait qu'un animal blessé, comme Tyson, est encore plus dangereux! La mobilité pour l'instant de Lennox Lewis qui est touché aussi au niveau de la main. Avec les plus grands fluides, ça ne gênait pas trop parce qu'il a les figures. Et le regardez là, les jambes de Lennox Lewis. Ça fait mal, ça fait mal à Mike. Le coup de coude. Allez, encore. Non, c'est bloqué. C'est bloqué dans le gant. Ça pèse sur des années un peu gaspillées. Ah oui. ça, ça sera quand même. Quand, quand vous dites ça, Jean-Claude, écoutez bien. Oh, oui. Oh. Oh. Depuis 1995, il n'a fait qu'un round. C'est très très peu. C'est sur place. C'est pas resté sur place. Oh, il est cible. Cible oh. trop facile. Oh là, il est touché, fatigué, éprouvé dans cette septième infériorité. In the seventh round, Lewis put Tyson off balance upon landing a crushing right hook. Lewis once more was overpowering and taking the round, with what was little resistance at that point. Il est monté. Le même, le même uppercut à Tokyo. Oh, il a fait l'ascenseur. And in the eighth round, the legend was no more. Un combat où on avait vu George Foreman qui est là au bord du ring. Oh là, du début du combat. Ouais, oh, c'est trop, c'est trop. Il a envie, il a envie de. Tyson peut. Lewis peut. Il va le faire. Il pose. Ah, il faut. Là, il faut du courage. Est-ce que du courage Jean-Claude, oh. il est KO, il est KO. La droite. The question was asked as if Tyson was still a force to be reckoned within the heavyweight division, and while he made quick work of Clifford Eddyne a year later, he would meet Danny Williams in the UK, who just like Buster Douglas was not meant to be a challenge for Tyson. Tyson came out strong and dominated the first round. He was giving Williams hell even from the very first minutes of the fight, and it seemed like it would be a quick night for him. Williams, no stranger to fouling, he just used his elbow. Danny Williams has still standing. Look at him, still standing. Three in a row. Dig it in. Left uppercut to the chin after a series of blows to the midsection. Looking to end it. Man of the ring. Dennis Alford to keep the punches up. These are vicious punches by Tyson. Another left hook upstairs. A left uppercut staggers Williams. The way to fight Mike Tyson. And he's learning that the hard way. Now, Williams get out of the first round. Already he has been wobbled. And that could be a huge mistake. Tyson going right to the body. We can do it. Tyson really belting to the midsection. Championship fight. He's never been in a fight of this magnitude. And boy, was it very good. Oh, something happened to Tyson. He may have gotten a low blow, but he is digging in. Excited for low blows in a couple of fights back in England. Tyson digging to the body. Williams in trouble in the early going. Good combinations on the inside and tremendously good left hooks. Another left hook, partially blocked by Williams. That one got through, then to the belly. Mike, keep him up. 
Williams had a much better second round, being able to land several power punches and trading blows with Tyson, who again appeared not to be phased at all. Wild punch. Question of whether he has heart. <laughs> yep. That party's answered. To the chin. Now back comes Williams with a left-right combination. And that was the uppercut by Williams. His elbows are high. And he's allowed Mike Tyson inside to the body. Danny Williams told us he wants to take this fight to the fourth, or fifth, or sixth round. But the problem is, you take this much punishment. We saw in that last round something that I think is a good sign for Mike Tyson. Bodes well for the future. He Tyson ripping uppercuts to the outside and used the jab. He only threw 11 jabs in round one. By Williams, he's ripping those shots. Pushing Tyson back. It's competitive now. Himself out. There's a good oh, left hook upstairs out of nowhere by Danny Williams. And throwing the jab, tying him up, pushing him back. There's the jab of Williams. And when he throws it, he's able to get that punch. Three scheduled for ten. Tyson, who had Williams in someone, but Alfred didn't indicate exactly. The referee might be a factor in this fight, and guess what? He is. Successfully. You know, a key element of this is the body work of Williams. He is really Great. making an impact. There's some blood. One point. Late punch. Now, Dennis Alfred is saying it was a non-intentional late punch thrown. Oh. Pushes Tyson back. But Williams with a left uppercut to the body. Williams fighting off the wall. Tyson will hope to take matters into his own hand. Again, the body shots by oh, a left hook to the neck by Mike Tyson. Some, this is a vicious overhand right. Missing with the left. There's a right hand by Williams. Push a warning for using the forearm by Dennis Alfred to Danny after they were broken. In round four, however, Tyson began to tire, neither throwing nor landing as many punches as he had in the previous rounds, and Williams capitalized heavily on this opportunity. So confusion uh, reigns Danny, here in round three. Oh, what a like Tyson. I don't think the blood is going into his eye. As we had a round of sounding shots by Tyson. Now Williams going back to the jab. He just ended on one punch right now. Williams knows it, and he throws combinations. He looks the same. He doesn't look like the same guy, but it was on in the chest. And back comes Williams. Tyson in some difficulty. Here in round four. One for an elbow and one for a low blow. So he lost two points in that last round. Tyson pours it on. Oh, a okay. piece the fourth more. round is the later round. That's when I could start to take over. He's trying to just end it on one. Big right hand, a straight right by Tyson. It's his conditioning into question. Tyson's pace has slowed. He was not pushing him off. A la Evander Holyfield and Lennox Lewis, and he's having his way. Firing shots. Big right hand by Danny oh, my God. Although the Greggy Tyson was able to get back up, he narrowly missed beating the referee's count of 10. Mike Tyson started questioning himself, believing that he no longer had what it took to compete. To prove himself that he could still do it, he took on a relatively unknown boxer in Kevin McBride. If he lost, it would mean that he would finally retire. Throwing first and McBride comes out throwing the first punches as both fighters take measure of each other. Power of five rounds of Hope Tyson. A lot will depend on kind of work in the inside. It's trainer Goody Petra told us their plan is to keep these coming in with the left. Danny Williams against hurt him. He's picking an long left by by Mike Tyson. Think of something else Mike Tyson's doing, and it might not hurt him tonight, although he's getting hit on the inside. He's squaring himself up to McBride. I don't know the McBride. Hunt rounds to build up staff to ever to do with the loss to percent because of the knee injury. Over the top comes McBride. He's so dramatic to hurt you. In the first round, not 
of the first round. But it would be over for fought on ball. Up. Up the line. Now he holds back. He's Tyson does want to keep it up for a joke. Much experience, always tested not to be a fact. Not much. Jim McBride, he's landed some pretty good for Mike Tyson. Tyson has the edge here, he's not drawn. And that's part of the defensive liabilities we've seen from Tyson. There's a low blow. McBride, right? He does not a boxer, and you're a puncher. McBride continues to stick to his game plan, consistently throwing punches to keep Tyson at bay. When the two fighters clinch, McBride looks to lean on Tyson in an effort to tire his. Tyson, something he used to do as an amateur a long time ago. Is he reverting to far? And how much credit? And McBride goes to the tactics of time. Tyson working hard up the cuts, eating his left. The head down of Tyson. McBride was able to land. McBride is throwing it, but he's just. Hard. Mike Tyson, not very effective throughout. And there's... Tyson opens the fourth with a hard right, but McBride ties him up to prevent further damage. Tyson launches a left uppercut and is beginning to get through McBride's defenses. This one. In this fight, that doesn't make for an extra. With a borderline oh, shot then. Manny with a little more regular leaner by Tyson. He bites the glove and comes up. Now this is the part where Mike Tyson tied up. McBride with the jab. Tyson. Missing. McBride better be careful. Some leverage. It's a mess defensively. But it's the body work of right hand did not have full impact. 271. That's a that you may have noticed. Downstairs. You know, the bride had better to lumbering giant of a heavy one. Those little short oh those punches in. Nice. Through four. I didn't even score a card very easily. Right hand of the body by Tyson is throwing some good shots down there. Pride jab. Landing into it. He's inviting the left movement. Pride. And he's landing right on it's across with the left that brings him a right up. Tyson not throwing too many punches. Considerably. Sure. <laughs> Saw this in which is kind of Tyson does. And to instill a lot of comedy. And back upstairs. Kevin the drop. Mike Tyson's in trouble in this fight right now. Well, a rugged round for Mike Tyson. That was a terrific right hand to the body and another one by McBride. And once he got Tyson on the inside, he landed some very good uppercuts. A punch that we know you can get in and he was going to rely on. Good work by Kevin McBride. And just as important, I think, he leaned on Tyson. He saved his energy by putting all 270 pounds on him. In the sixth round, Kevin McBride finally gets the best of Tyson and is beginning to tear him down. Remaining, Tyson trying to end it right here. Now, if this fight is stopped, they should go to the scorecard. Turning to rough house tactics here. A round for Mike Tyson. And really has his hands full. But McBride showing his heart. And landing with those left. Turn for McBride. Tyson too far away. A right upward delivered with him bending at the knee, and they had some power. Mike Tyson left up to the sixth round. And if McBride actually wins this round, it would be a 10 7 round. Not a knockdown, McBride just pushing him. He can barely make it to his feet. After the round, Tyson surprisingly quit on the stool for the first time in his career. His post fight press conference was just heartbreaking. Um, no, I'm, I'm just fighting to take care of my um, my bills, basically. I don't have the stomach for this kind of no more. I got I'm more I'm more um, conscious of my children and those guys looking at my parents. I'm just I don't have I don't have that ferocity. I'm not an animal anymore. Does that mean we won't see you fight again? Yeah, that's most likely I'm not going to fight again. While Mike Tyson is without question one of the best boxers and punchers to ever set foot on our planet, we should all remember the times he was just human.